Uh, now we move to the very exciting uh, sessions, the oral abstract uh, presentation. Uh, and it will be concerned with viral hepatitis infections, mainly hepatitis B. And the uh, first speaker will be uh, Dr. Leto Olivier from Côte d'Ivoire. And uh, he will present on resistance of hepatitis B to nucleotide inhibitors of reverse transcriptase and its impact on surface antigen uh, in hepatitis B, HIV, co-infected patients in Abidjan. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen. The work I have the honor to present to you is entitled HPV resistant to nucleoside reverse transparency inhibitors and its impact on the surface antigen in the HIV infected patients in Abidjan. The presentation of this work will be structured around the four following points. We will start by the introduction, followed by the working methodology. The result will be discussed and we will end up with the conclusion. As an introduction, it should be said that HBV infection among people living with HIV in Côte d'Ivoire is a health issue with an estimated prevalence of 13.4%. Therapeutic strategies for this co-infection in Côte d'Ivoire are based on those of WHO, which advocates the introduction of nucleoside reverse transparency inhibitors such as tenofovir and lamivudine. The virological monitoring of HBV and the control of the NRTI's effectiveness should involve virological tests such as the viral load of the hepatitis B, virus and the genotypic resistance test. These tests are inaccessible to the majority of patients infected with HIVB because of the cost and the decentralization in reference laboratories. Thus, HBV treatments for HIV infected people are initiated or modified without taking into account virological tests and HBV resistance to NRTIs. While mutations that occur in the polymerase gene and the HBV surface can give a clear survival advantage. The overall objective of this study is to describe HBV resistance mutations to NRTIs and the impact on HBS antigen in HBV, HIV co-infected patients under treatment in Abidjan. In order to carry out our study, we conducted a cross-cutting retrospective study with descriptive and analytical aim. This study is based on analysis of the data from the TIs and HBS antigen sequences of HIV. The study population consisted of 300 HBV, HIV co-infected patients treated at CR, CIRBA, 44 adults under antiviral treatment with an HIVB viral load of more than 20 IU were included in the study. In terms of biological analysis, plasma samples was true at minus 80 degrees were used for the genotypic resistant test, which consisted of the extraction of HBV DNA followed by amplification and sequencing of the pole gene on an automatic sequencer. The raw sequences of sense were analyzed with several software packages in order to obtain a consensus sequence which was exported on online HBV tool software for the detection of HBV resistance mutation to NRTIs. As a whole, 30 nucleotide sequences could be generated. Reverse transparency analysis allowed the observation of primary HBV resistance mutations that are capable of including lambuvidine resistance and telduvidine cross resistance from the outset. This with an estimated prevalence of HBV resistance to NRTIs of 17%. It was higher than that of Dos Santos, but lower than that of Archampon and colleagues in Ghana. This high prevalence of HB resistance to lamivudine would have been due to the major duration of treatment estimated at five years in our study or to poor adherence. Analysis of the nucleotide sequences of the reverse transparency of NRTIs resistant viruses revealed combination of labidine resistant mutation with an estimated frequency of 60%. The strongest was the triple mutation combination 
there is an estimated frequency of 60%. It was higher than that of Kwangfak in Cameroon. This high frequency of triple combination mutation could be explained by the long duration of uh, treatment of lamivudine or by the selection of potential lamivudine induced vaccine escape mutations, according to Paul and colleagues. On the other hand, the analysis of the 3D nucleotide sequences at the level of the DHS antigene allowed the observation of mutations in the HBV, BHS, antigen, BHS escape with an estimated prevalence of 53%. This high prevalence could be a risk factor for the management of hepatitis B virus as it can lead to a decrease of the sensitivity of serological tests or the escape of HB as antigen for the vaccine or treatment. This could cause the activation of HPV in infected patients or cause so-called occult hepatitis B leading most often to liver cancer, according to Huang and colleagues. Well, the overlap of the pole gene and the surface HB antigen led to investigate the impact of HPV resistant to NRTIs on the co-infected patients in the study. The results showed us that HPV virus trends with antiretroviral resistance mutation associated with potential vaccine escape mutation were detected with an estimated prevalence of 13%. These results show that lamivudine could be the main molecule associated with the emergence of these potential mutant strains. This has been confirmed by Sevin and colleagues. At the end of our study, we can say that this study provided important data on the immune escape mechanism of HBS antigen and on the resistance of HBV to necrolytic reverse transparency inhibitors in Cote d'Ivoire. Thus, the surveillance of the HIV virus strains resistance to NRT should be a priority in Cote d'Ivoire in Africa in order to achieve the objective set by WHO, which is to eradicate viral hepatitis by 2030. Thank you for your kind attention. The next speaker is Dr. Marta Maria Rodriguez from Spain, uh, uh, who will present on experience of the first hepatitis B program in rural Sierra Leone, one year of success and challenges. Hello. My name is Emmanuel Temwendo Nyama. I'm working for Partners in Health with my colleague, Dr. Mata Pacino. We are in charge of running the hepatitis B clinic, the only one of the only two clinics in the country and the only hepatitis B clinic in the rural areas. Uh, the burden of hepatitis B disease in our country is a public health concern and this is why we face the problem and we are here to present um, the activities and the operations we did after one year. So on the next slide you say uh, is a map of Sierra Leone and the map of Connor District. The map on my far left, which is blue in color, is the map of Sierra Leone, our country. The yellow section, orange section of the map on my right hand is the map of corner districts with different catchment areas of, of community health centers. The district consists of 15 chiefdoms where we have the referrals of patients coming to the healthcare facility. The, the population of the district is about 500,000 people and we have 97 primary health care facilities with only one secondary health care facility which is quite a government hospital to be specific where the clinic is located and 75 percent of this population lives in the rural areas. So the burden as, as I said earlier that it is very challenging for, for people, patients in particular, to access the secondary healthcare facilities because of the poor road network, particularly in the raining seasons, where we find ourselves. For example, it takes someone more than two hours to access the healthcare facility from one community health center to the district 
referral hospital. So the next slide you see represent a picture which is showing how the hepatitis B clinic runs. The hepatitis B clinic is one is part of the non-communicable disease unit in the hospital. Our team consists of two doctors, three nurses, one CHO, one M and E officer, and one clerk. The first picture on my far left you see shows the entrance into the clinic and at the bottom is an examination room with Dr. Chembe and Pumba, one of our nurses in the clinic. Previous to the medical approach is that the patient is linked and registered. After the first visit, the patient comes to the clinic with the laboratory and ultrasound scanning investigations. One of the innovations we are doing in the last six months is the use of gene expert to determine the viral route in order for us to know the indication of treatment for the patients besides ultrasound scanning and then also the clinical findings and the APRE tests. The last picture at the right bottom shows what the pharmacy technician, which is who is rendering, who is giving medication to a patient, a NOPOV, who met the criteria for treatment. All of these services we are rendering to the patient are free of cost. So these are one of the figures we want to share with all of you. As you can see, on April 2020, 351 patients were enrolled in the clinic, and most of our patients are coming from the outpatient department, and not so many, so many from the screening areas of the antenatal care of the blood bank. Almost 30% of our patients don't have any level of education, and this is a big challenge when we have to explain them about the sickness. One of the main gaps is that only 50 to 70 percent of our patients have the completed baseline assessment when they have to the cleaning clinic for the first or second time and also uh, or the main concern is like we have uh, around 30 percent of loss of follow-up after one year of, uh, of running the clinic and now we are we are doing we are implementing uh, a system of relink patient and also, we are trying to analyze the reason for this loss of follow-up, including the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a brief uh, summary about our patients on treatment. As you may see, 12.8 of our patients have indication of treatment, 82.2% of those uh, successfully initiated the treatment, and 94.6% are uh, still on treatment and linked to the clinic. The last thing I want to share is like 35.5 of our patients started the treatment with a decompensated situation of the cirrhosis, but none of those patients after one year on treatment have presented new decompensations or hospitalizations or there. So as you may see, we can run a, a big, strong program uh, for hepatitis B, even in areas with very, very low resources. And we also think that these uh, clinics can be run for non physician health workers. Um, as in anywhere, there are some challenges we are trying to face. One of these is like the, the incomplete baseline information. We are trying to create like a pre-test system in which when the patient comes to the first visit, they have all the tests done before coming. We are trying to face our loss of follow-up with an active program of follow-up for close patients by phone calls. Also, we are uh, implementing home visits for the most vulnerable ones of the compensated patients. And we are doing training uh, about patient education with our health workers. We are working with a national program to review the indications of treatment. We are trying to open the indication uh, uh, to patients with lower levels of viral load and ALT um, elevated levels. And, and for the inadequate screening in some areas of the hospital, we are trying to create a program and a standardized referral system. So this is, this is all. Thank you so much for listening and we are waiting for your questions. Thank you.
Thank you. Next speaker will be Dr. Mustafa Yassin from Sudan, who will present on frequency on occult hepatitis B virus among GRAL donors in Khartoum State, Sudan, a preliminary study. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. Mustafa Tijani from Faculty of Medical Laboratory Science, Nilin University, Sudan. I am here today on behalf of my collaborator, Ms. Rayan Abdullah and Ms. Siham Suleiman, to give you a short presentation about our study, Frequency of Focal Hepatitis B Virus Among Blood Donors in Khartoum, Sudan, a preliminary study. Hepatitis B virus remains a major public health issue worldwide. Globally, an estimated of 257 million people were living with chronic hepatitis B virus infection with the great risk for liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Sudan is classified among countries with high hepatitis B surface antigen in the immensity of more than 8%. Hepatitis B transfusion transmission have been reduced since the introduction of hepatitis B surface antigen in routine screening of blood donors since 1970s. But transmission by blood component negative for hepatitis B surface antigen can still occur and it remains the most frequent transfusion transmitted viral infection. So the term occult hepatitis B infection have been introduced. It's simply defined as serologically hepatitis B surface antigen negative despite the presence of circulating hepatitis B viral DNA. Another definitions also includes other serological markers such as anticore antibody and or anti hepatitis B surface antigen antibody, anti-BS. Studies on large set of blood donors using nucleic acid tests confirm the phenomenon of occult hepatitis B infection and form the basis of mandatory nucleic acid tests for transfused blood units in numerous countries, developed countries. Unfortunately, such testing regimen has not been incorporated into algorithm of many laboratories in developing countries. Occult hepatitis B infection is becoming a major global threat but the available data on its prevalence in various parts of the world are often scarce, particularly in resources limited countries. Defining the epidemiology of occult hepatitis B infection can be challenging as it relates on several factors. For instance, the performance and sensitivity of hepatitis B surface antigen and hepatitis B viral DNA detection assay. It also varies with the presence of risk factor for hepatitis B virus exposure, the presence and severity of liver disease, the prevalence of hepatitis B virus in general population of a given country, and the def definition used for occult hepatitis B infection. Hepatitis B surface antigen negative, hepatitis B viral DNA positive blood component have to be considered infectious. Hepatitis B virus transmission from occult hepatitis B infection blood donor is still a major health issue in low and middle income countries where anticore and or nucleic acid tests are not implemented. In Sudan, there is a paucity in published data reporting the incidence of occult hepatitis B infection. The aim of this study was to investigate the frequency of occult hepatitis B virus in blood donors attending different blood banks in Khartoum, Sudan. Methods. This was descriptive cross-sectional study, includes a number of 90 healthy blood donors, negative for hepatitis B surface antigen. Occult hepatitis B virus was investigated by examination of hepatitis B core antibody and detection of viral DNA by conventional BCR. Results, all of the study population were negative for hepatitis B surface antigen confirmed by ELISA test. All of them was male and their age was range between 18 to 43 years old, which was classified into three groups from 18 to 25 years, from 26 to 35 years, and from 36 to 45 years old. All of studied population were screened for anticore antibody. Out of 90 studied population, 26 show positive results for anticore antibodies, which means 
they had exposed to hepatitis B virus during their lives. To detect ocal hepatitis B infection, all positive anticore positive samples were subjected for conventional PCR to detect hepatitis B viral DNA. This table shows the distribution of age and PCR result among 26 anticore antibody blood donors. Out of 26, 14 showed positive result for hepatitis B viral DNA with a percentage of 53.8%. The frequency of local hepatitis B infection among the total of 90 studied blood donor was 15.6%. Now let's move to the discussion. Few data about ocal hepatitis B virus in Sudan. There's a few studies about OBI in Sudan. Among blood donors in a study done in 2012, the frequency of ocal hepatitis B infection was 38%. Our study results was quite low when compared to this. This may be attributed to the sensitivity of method used for detection of hepatitis B viral DNA. In their studies, they used real-time BCR and we used conventional in-house BCR. Our similarity in agreement is studied done in Sudan in different population. In HIV, the frequency was 15.1% and among renal transplant, the frequency was 18%. When it comes to comparison between our result and result in different African countries. Occult hepatitis B infection was detected in 3.8% in blood donors in LP Nigeria, and it was 17% in southwestern Nigeria. In Egypt 2013, the frequency of occult hepatitis B infection among blood donors was 17.2%. In Libya, it was 0.8%, and in Yaoundé, Cameroon, it was 0.56%. The lack of sensitive, standardized, and validated assay for the diagnosis of focal hepatitis B infection is a major limitation. And available data across the study cannot be properly compared and combined. In conclusion, focal hepatitis B infection exists with the studied blood donors and with the use of hepatitis B surface antigen as the sole detection marker for hepatitis B virus in blood banks. There is a great danger of hepatitis B transmission through blood transfusion. Transfusion transmission of hepatitis B virus could be reduced by implementing anticore screening and or hepatitis B viral nucleic acid test with a lower limit of detection. Thank you for listening. Our next speaker is Dr. Jose Debes from the United States who will present on hepatitis B awareness and perceptions among healthcare workers across Africa, a report from the African Hepatitis B Network. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Deves from the University of Minnesota, and I will be talking to you today about hepatitis B awareness and perceptions among healthcare workers across Africa. And this is a report from the African HEPB Network. These are some of the authors in our paper, and I have nothing to report in terms of conflict. I don't have to tell this audience uh, the problem that hepatitis B is in Africa. It affects uh, quite a large number of people and causes quite a large number of deaths. This is a study that we did a few years ago showing that about 40% of patients with hepatitis B and liver cancer get diagnosed before age 40. So we can see that hepatitis B can affect people very early in their lives. Now, one of the big problems here are the chronic manifestations of hepatitis B. And reality is that in the great majority of patients, they have no chronic symptoms. So unless the individuals know that they have hepatitis B, there's no other way for them to be screened or be assessed in the clinic. One could then postulate that there is a problem of lack of awareness of hepatitis B across the African continent. With this in mind, we created the Pan-African Survey on Hepatitis B Knowledge and Awareness among healthcare workers. In order to do this, we first created the African Hepatitis B Network, which is still active. We created a survey that inquired about different aspects of hepatitis B, and we distributed it a hard copy 
in different languages. We requested a minimum of 15 service per center and a minimum of three professions per center. We obtained 1,044 responses, which is quite a bit, from 12 different African countries. And you can see in this map some of the African countries that were providing the answers. Now, if I look at the main demographics here, we can see that 92% of these uh, responses were in English, which already could talk a bit about a bias. And 54% of them were females, with 46% being male respondents. The demographics in terms of profession was quite good. We can see that 25% of the respondents were nurses, 20% residents or interns, 5% consultants, and 10% lab technicians. So we had a nice mix of professions across the healthcare sector. Some of the basic uh, answers that we received, about 65% of uh, respondents indicated that they were aware of the hepatitis B or status, and 61% said that they have received the hepatitis B vaccine. Depending how you look at this, you could say this is good or this is not that great. We believe it's not that great as we're talking about healthcare workers. So we think this is quite a large gap in here. Some of the other concerning factors, uh, findings, sorry, include the fact that 4% of uh, respondents indicating to know a family member with hepatitis B. Considering the epidemiology of HIV in Africa, this is uh, quite low. And we believe there could be a representation of social stigma and lack of disclosure of the disease. Finally, we also found that in those that responded to this, less than 50% mentioned that their children were vaccinated against hepatitis B. That is very, very low. One could argue though that maybe the provider doesn't know the exact vaccines that the children received, but still these are healthcare workers and this number we believe is quite low. When we look at awareness across occupations, we didn't find major differences. Only medical trainees, which is the first bar here on the left in each variable, were more aware of their hepatitis B, their vaccination status, and the vaccination of the children, but the other professions were pretty similar. Moreover, when we asked the uh, surveyors like whether they knew the transmission routes or whether they knew that working in a hospital uh, increased the risk of um, obtaining or um, acquiring hepatitis B, the great majority responded positively. If we look at this graph on the right, more than 90% of them knew that by working in the hospital, they were at high risk of acquiring hepatitis B. These are some of the responses by country. There's a lot to see here, so I won't go through it. Just for you to know that Cameroon had the highest rate of awareness of hepatitis B, Kenya, the highest rate of vaccination, and Egypt, the highest rate of vaccination of children. But keep in mind that uh, in several of these countries, we just got responses from one center only. So this uh, answer should be take, uh, taken very cautiously. We finally decided to divide the answers between East and West Africa. There are many ways to divide East and West Africa. Uh, we did it, as you can see in this slide, and we removed North Africa. We did not find major differences, but some of the things that we found was that West Africans were more aware of their hepatitis B serous status than East Africans, 80% against 60%. We also found that the reasons for not vaccination were high, were different actually in each part, with 60% of West Africans citing cost as a reason for non-vaccination, and 40% of East African citing other causes as uh, reasons, and this included not knowing where to get the vaccine. So as a summary, we found large gaps in hepatitis B serostatus awareness and vaccination across Africa in healthcare workers. We did find that healthcare workers clearly understood that working in a hospital increased the risk of hepatitis B. Nonetheless, 60% of them only were vaccinated. We found a very low hepatitis B vaccine uptake among children of healthcare workers, but this could be biased due to the fact that they didn't know the vaccines they were receiving. And finally, we found evidence that we think that hepatitis B still represents a source of social stigma in the continent. 
These are some of the acknowledgements. The African Head Network members are all here. Many countries, as you can see, and here are our um, funding sponsors that we'd like to thank. And finally, I can take questions if they're available online. Uh, otherwise, please visit our African Head Network to find out more. Thank you very much. I would like to thank all the speakers for their excellent presentations and uh, presenting uh, very interesting studies. Uh, I would like to remind the delegates that they can meet the abstract uh, presenters from the last two sessions and ask them all the burning questions. To do this, please go back to the timeline and choose the abstract presenter you would like to talk to in the meet the oral abstract presenter session. They will be happy to answer your questions. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for more interesting presentations and discussions. Thank you.